Hello, flight simulation. Why do we need it? Before I address this important question, let me first define what flight simulation means in the context of aircraft performance. When hearing the word flight simulation, you may think of flight simulators used for training pilots to perform scientific research, as is done with this research simulator, available at Delft University of Technology, or simply to have fun. In all these types of simulation, there is somebody representing the pilot, providing input to software through an interface such as a joystick, to a computer which calculates the motion of the aircraft, and the computer visualizes this motion and, in case of motion-based simulators, drives the actual motion. In these piloted simulations, the aircraft is represented as a rigid body with inertia, resulting in six equations of motion. This is called a flight dynamics model and this can be used for stability and controllability calculations. This is not the type of simulations I am referring to. In all the theory covered so far, I have treated the aircraft as a point mass without inertia, which can be represented with three equations of motion. This means it can be used to compute the trajectory of an aircraft, but it cannot be used to com compute rotational motion around the center of gravity. This also means that it is applicable to simulations of a longer time scale with a larger time step, such as a climb of several minutes. Flight dynamics models can be used to simulate problems which have a smaller time scale, such as a roll maneuver from level flight to a specific bank angle, which only takes a few seconds or even less. So, why do we need aircraft performance simulations? It is needed to make accurate computations of the aircraft trajectories, fuel burn, performance parameters such as time to climb, minimum turn radius, etc. In situations where it either becomes too complex to make use of analytical computations or when very accurate results are needed. An example of a complex situation is the trajectory of an aircraft landing in crosswind conditions. In such a case, the crosswind may be varying as a function of altitude. That significantly complicates the equations of motion and makes it hard to find an analytical solution. An example of a situation where high accuracy is needed is flight planning. Over here, I have a flight management computer. In some sense, this has a sim similar functionality as a smartphone when used for navigation. This computer can help in planning a flight. For a given trajectory, it can accurately compute the fuel burn and thereby the amount of fuel needed. It can also help to calculate the most optimal trajectory of the aircraft in terms of fuel burn, or another quantity such as time required to get to the destination. It is also possible to put many accurate results in an extensive database and to provide these in a flight manual. Another example of the use of aircraft performance simulations can be in the context of aircraft design. Whenever a new aircraft is designed or a design modification is made, performance calculations must be made. Ideally, all calculations are very accurate such that an aircraft will perform exactly as predicted when its first flight is made. Concluding, Aircraft performance simulations are needed both for aircraft operations and aircraft design. These simulations should not be confused with piloted simulations. The question now is how to develop aircraft performance simulations. And that is a whole different topic. <laughs>